This is the uh, route of the Liverpool Overhead Railway. Um, this is uh, Bob and I are working on this at the moment for various models. Uh, and this is uh, Bob has put together the beginnings of the route using the models that I've been able to make so far, together with uh, placeholders in the form of other models which uh, will be eventually be replaced. So this is uh, uh, at the southern end of the Liverpool Overhead Railway. This is the entrance to Dingle. It had an underground station as the uh, terminus, the southern terminus of the over overhead line just to uh, for a bit of variety so here we are we're in um, surveyor and uh, you can see here that uh, Bob has uh, outlined using a textures has outlined the different docks just roughly there to give us a position of uh, that's Harrington dock uh, the first on the uh, on the route uh, there's another dock basin here as you can see and this is um, the old Dingle terminus and then the line that curved sharply away over the goods yard here dock lines and then down to Dingle into through the tunnel so this gives you an idea of what the Liverpool overhead will eventually uh, look like uh, this is a placeholder station uh, not the final station I'm going to be modeling the final state of the stations for these and uh, crossover now normally we will have the crossover so that the third rail is stopped either side of the crossover but this is just to get the um, the length and position of the viaduct correct and you can see here that the viaduct fairly sort of zigzags about and we try to keep the curve of the rails obviously they are close to the zigzags but uh, these are some of my um, or we're becoming these are my five foot sections there of fixed track and we've allowed the that allows the track which I've the track spline which I've made to curve round uh, on these sort of almost sort of dog leg uh, uh, changes of direction of the viaduct so here we are running on and um, the one up from um, Dingle station is uh, let me see now that will be coming into Herculaneum uh, where are we have we come past Herculaneum dock yet it's Harrington so then we follow the route right the way through and you can see here if we zoom back a fair bit uh, Toxteth dock and then along to this is Herculaneum no it isn't it's Brunswick <laughs> I'm still learning all these but you can see how the viaduct now is beginning to look the part uh, I've just um, seen a, another photograph constant, I'm constantly hunting up photographs and Bob and I are constantly checking photographs so um, on one of those I did see some refuges for that is for um, any workmen on the viaduct as refuges so I've got to check those out you'll also notice that the placeholders where we've got the signals the signals are uh, too far out from the track that's the normal distance uh, for signals in trains but um, they we need to make new ones that will be moved over to closer to the track that will then um, more accurately um, represent the two the two aspect uh, color signals color light signals so at the moment um, uh, Bob set this these are just obviously just bits of platform nothing like the uh, original so they, they really are just placeholders and occasionally you'll see a length of wall cutting it through uh, that's um, Bob uses that as a straight edge so these are this is a section of fixed track I think with about a two and a half degree if I have a look here I can find out have a just find out what that is uh, I think it's a uh, let's go here yes that's a 2.5 degree bend but I have made bends up to uh, this is a sharper bend here I think maybe not maybe that is a another two and a half degree 
well that's actually no that's a five foot straight section of the viaduct with a bit of spline so this is all spline in between with track spline added on top um, and again there for that curve and you can see here the the fun we've had because the viaduct has to make go in straight lines but the track has to curve round so it has been a bit of a challenge just to get that as, as we want it uh, here it looks like there's yes there's a couple of longer sections of fixed track uh, let's have a look here that's claiming it's a tile I have done a whole series of map tiles which uh, Bob and I are using they're not going to be released because they are we do that's a five degree curve and a five degree curve there because we um, we're just using them to position items they're not for release so if we zoom around here we're coming up to pier head by the looks of it one of the big buildings there we managed to just locate salt house albert dock <coughs> and then coming into some of the more um, angled sections of the viaduct there's a 10 degree I have made a 15 and a 20 degree curve but um, may not have been necessary but at the same time we wanted the flexibility it's very good to have that flexibility which dock are we here Prince's dock there we are. and just coming a bit further along well maybe we do need them um, although it says map tile there it's not let's get a bit closer uh, what was that? No, it's still coming up as a map tile. Uh, the reason why it's coming up as a map tile is if I put it on wireframe, there's the map underneath which we've used and which we won't be releasing. Uh, when we eventually do have the route created, it's one of Bob's straight edge walls. Um, when we do have the um, uh, straight edge, uh, when we do have the um, the route finished then um, we'll be removing those because they're simply guides to keep us right yeah, since just identifying those uh, right the way through so just looking to see there's the switchback coming up shortly so I'm not sure which station this one is Nelson Dock is there uh, what's that I should know these by now, but I don't. I'm at a loss what that one is. <laughs> and one well, Nelson dot there. And you can see really, it was quite remarkable. And this is the um, switchback here. And what happened was, is if we go right down and then zoom along. Oh, we wanna, don't want to zoom that way, do we? We want to zoom the other way. Let's go over to here and go down. This uh, was in order for the overhead railway to get under a uh, coal line, Lax and York's railway coal line that came in here. So again, the way we've, we've done this at the moment, the way Bob's done this at the moment is just to, as an indicator to show the position of these, um, of these lines. This viaduct has to be replaced by an embankment with the special track on. So I've got to make um, a track spline, a three rail track spline, which has the ordinary sleepers, cross sleepers, as opposed to the longitudinal sleepers, which are on the um, on the LOR track. So that's climbing up again. We're pretty accurate on the gradient. We've got that pretty much sorted, I think. That looks really good. Bob's done an excellent job there. Also, he's within about half a dozen yards of the actual length of the LOR so he's done a really brilliant job in getting this position just right and there we see leading out to one of the other docks just their placeholder tracks essentially just to locate what we'll need to bring in so this is just the early days with the initial models of the viaducts and um, you'll see from the other video i released just yesterday that um, i'm still some way off getting the first of the um, carriages the the powered uh, driving uh, powered stock to operate to operate on this um, just at the very early stages of creating the mesh but you can see it's a very extensive railway so it's a scale 
Uh, that's going on six and a half miles all on viaduct and um, you can see these little reds red that's where sections of five foot sections of fixed track uh, Bob's used those in order to locate the, the splines both for the viaduct and for the track and there we are and there's some other crossovers that still need to go in I'm quite sure of that and then we have the sharp curve around to Seaford and somewhere here about here I think where Bob's put the two tracks down that's where the original Seaford station was and that's where we will have the, the um, double deck or the two level uh, depot that will come off here somewhere and we'll have a proper, the proper junction again it's extra bits I've got to model to bring that into play and then the Seaford station itself is a curved station so this will have to be, I'll have to make that as a one off propriety and then from there on from Seaford and again you can see there's a crossover there that would normally we would have as a without the third rail crossing um, and from Seaford uh, we go on down to the junction with the Lancashire, Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway which is quite an extensive uh, and quite complicated range of um, junctions and just to get the whole thing tested out uh, Bob has put on the uh, Andy Andy's um, Redwestern Railway uh, inappropriate I guess on railway rail cars. But the thing about these is, is that they have out the open on the that the same as the motor car, the central trailer car and the motor car on the other one. So we've now used that as a run amount just to just to check over the line. So there we are, you can see that it's not just the models that are going ahead. Uh, Bob has done a heck of a lot of work to create the um, recreate the routes and frankly everything now uh, <laughs> we've got to make everything else all the scenery around it as well recreate the docks uh, I've got an idea on that we're working on an idea on that we want to have the docks I certainly want to have the docks <laughs> if I can persuade Bob to do all the work um, but um, definitely we want to really recreate that uh, extraordinary overhead railway that ran um, from the 18, 1890 well, let me think when was it first um, built I've actually got a book in front of me here that should tell me uh, it operated from 1893 until 1956 and really it was closed in 1956 because it the viaduct and uh, much of the the sort of uh, structure of the line needed extensive work and it was just beyond the finances of the operating company and um, coupled with that of course uh, Liverpool Council had introduced trams and then buses and um, so it faced some stiff competition but it was very very heavily used in its peak period and um, so I'm uh, thinking and, and Bob certainly agrees with me on this that we're aiming for the period um, so that's another bridge I've got to replace, I've got to replace, make and replace. Um, for a period between the wo World Wars, and the 1920s, 1930s. So we're going for that. Some of these bridges are lifting bridges. There is one which is a double deck lifting bridge because um, one of the things that, uh, the reasons why it was built like this, this overhead line, was because down here underneath the viaduct were the freight lines, a double uh, standard gauge freight line that ran served the dock system and so we're going to be able to have with our Liverpool overhead railway apart from that running away and we'll set it I think so at least one of the options is to have it just chuntering away quite um, happily uh, automatically by itself and then underneath uh, will be the uh, conventional standard gauge uh, freight lines which serve all the docks so there's an immense possibility for the Liverpool overhead route and um, we think it's going to be very enjoyable to do. We've only just started the modelling stage, this is very early days so, and I was determined that we get the viaduct done first as the basis of the uh, models, um, basis of the whole thing. It's one, another one of Bob's straight edge walls, the uses of the straight edge of the wall. So I just left it exactly as Bob has sent it over to me, this is about the fourth version I think he sent and uh, this one is the most precise and every all of these curves 
are following on the rather extraordinary route of the Liverpool Overhead Railway. So I hope that's been of interest, this video has been of interest, just a little update to show you what is happening and how there's going to be quite, well really quite an extraordinary possibility. I mean these are all the docks, you can just see here as we go along, these are the many docks. So uh, at the moment we're not going out too far, in fact I think some of them are just cutting off yeah, at the edge and the temptation will be, certainly for me, will be to, there's the Alexandra dock. I've actually started, uh, I've just sort of, it's just the dock wall and the, and then this would all have to be lowered to create the basin, but the dock walls right the way back to here, uh, to the station and where the, uh, I think that's the station, yeah that's the station, how could I miss that? Um, and there's the number, I think. and um, so these are about um, 500 feet or more, maybe six, 700 feet uh, long. So at the moment, uh, the way I'm thinking of doing this is to model uh, discrete dot groups. So for example, this uh, causeway or bulkway or whatever here, around to here, and this edge of the basin and round to here and then over to this one and then round to this one I think this is the one where there's another lock gate here and um, and and enough to go inland so that we can lower the terrain and uh, get a smooth join and these will all be cobbled and I've got a texture for the ins for the water side of the docks and the idea is is that they will be pieces that will click together so you'll be able to put down the um, Alexandra dock or Alexandra dock one and then the next dock here which I'll make will click to it and so all the way along you'll assemble it as a series of scenery items for all the docks and then you can start adding warehouses tr tracks like this railway the railway lines I mean I, I think this is an incredible project and one which is absolutely fascinating uh, I'm just looking to see now there must be there must be one of the bridges there's a lifting bridge to get access to uh, to these docks I think I think these are some of the dots there must be a lifting bridge somewhere that um, I just can't see at the moment there's no there's the bit down so there we are, uh, can't think of anything else really to add. If by any chance you are a modeler and feel you would like to have a go at making some of the uh, buildings that are very much a part of the Liverpool waterfront in the 1920s, some of the uh, warehouses, I mean it's, a, it's really a large number of structures that we need to have, but if you fancy having a go at that, uh, we'd be very pleased because um, I'm not too keen on doing a lot of the buildings myself, I must admit. Uh, I don't mind doing all the bridges and rolling stock and that. And as you can see, Bob is doing a heck of a lot of work to get the track and the whole layout of the route um, correct and operating. And he, once we get something running on it, he will be the signals man, absolutely, to get the whole thing running correctly under the um, train's AI. So there we are. I'm just looking there, I've got an idea, Salt House, maybe there was a bridge somewhere near there, I forget now. I've read the books but it is remembering these things is always a problem, but that, that actually really brings it up. Just looking along there, it's just incredible, the dock system there was, and what a wonderful railway it was, and how tremendous it would have been have had a run along that railway and looking out at all the ships that were coming in and going out that's another thing ships we're going to need lots of ships so all in all a really remarkable route uh, and when we start releasing the models you'll be able to have a go yourself at the route we're not planning to release this anytime soon but it's just to show you what the uh, Liverpool overhead is all about to give you an idea of the sheer um, complexity of the layout but um, you know you can add your own little overhead line based on the Liverpool overhead railway to your own layout when you uh, when we start releasing the stuff uh, maybe some few months away yet but 
really really enjoyable a great line to model so there we are that's so that's Bob's um, brilliant route for the Liverpool overhead uh, and um, I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have any queries or questions or comments please do post them up we'll be happy to respond it's very much a joint effort between Bob and myself and uh, we're really looking forward to progressing uh, the whole uh, kit and caboodle that's needed to reproduce this just amazing amazing railway we haven't even thought yet about the ground floor <laughs> the ground level railways some lovely little dock shunters there's nothing like a docks railway I think they're fantastic and here we are this is going to be the bee's knees oh, I think so anyway so there we are as I say that's the video um, please do uh, comment if you wish uh, do ask questions I'll just show you those can you see the maps or they get them they're not going to show themselves in wireframe maybe oh there they are Ooh, suddenly appeared um, and um, so uh, yes leave comments questions queries whatever can't guarantee when it's going to be out uh, if you like the video please um, subscribe to my video channel there ING for trains because it certainly encourages me to produce more of them and show you what I'm getting up to <laughs>